Hey, scholars, good to be back with you. And today I'd like to talk to you a little bit about how to find the components of a force in 3D. This is something we have to do a lot in uh, structural mechanics problems. Forces generally are in three dimensions. We tend to talk about them in two dimensions in class just to make the uh, mathematics a little simpler. Uh, 3D is just a little more of the same. It adds a little bit of additional mathematics. But conceptually, it's no different. It's the same idea. So if you can break a vector down into forces in two dimensions, you can do it in three dimensions. And hopefully, I'm here to help. Now, before we get started, I've got to warn you. There is a construction project right outside my window. I'm at Purdue University, and this is the uh, spring of 2020. It's March of 2020 right now. And the nuclear engineering building next door is being torn down. Uh, right across the sidewalk from my window, which is great. We get a new building. That's super. But for right now, it gets a little noisy. And uh, here's what it looks like. So while that stuff's making a little noise, I'll do what I can to try to attenuate it. I might be able to kill a little of it in post-processing. But if you hear stuff, that's all that's going on. Anyway, so let's get back to uh, what we're talking about. We're going to need a sample problem, right? So I made this up. Okay. This black right there, that's our force, and it has a magnitude of 2,000 newtons. Now, forces have directions. Forces are vectors, so they have magnitude and direction. There's the magnitude. And the way I define the, the direction in three dimensions is akin to how you do it in two dimensions. In two dimensions, there'd be a force triangle. Well, now our force triangle is in three dimensions. So I drew a cube here, and I made some proportions here. Now, 4, 4, and... Uh, six. Now, before we do this, we're going to need to know what the axes, the directions of the axes are. So, let's see. Let's put this right here. That's the x direction, horizontal. The y direction is vertical. And kind of coming out the board there, there's the z direction. Alrighty, now why are they in those directions? Well, we like to use right-handed coordinate systems. And the rule of thumb here, literally the rule of thumb, for right-handed coordinate systems, if I were to grab the x-axis with my right hand and pretend to rotate it in the y direction, imagine I was grabbing this thing and just twisting, my thumb sticks out that direction. And my thumb is, doesn't stick out like most people, but it's enough. Um, comes out this direction. So x, y, that means z is coming out uh, of the board here. And that's a right-handed coordinate system. So I've got directions here. Now, what do these, this 4, 4, and 6 mean? Are those physical dimensions? Maybe. But they're, they're, they're proportional to each other. Their actual magnitude doesn't matter. It's only their relative magnitudes, their relative proportions that matter. And here's how we can do this. I can, where did my marker go? we we'll use black here, I guess. F is, let's see, 4 in the x direction. Now, how do I write x direction? Well, I'm going to use something called a unit vector. Uh, if you're unfamiliar with those, well, I'll tell you about them here in a second. 6 in j direction and 4 in the k direction. Now, what, and there's, there's one other problem here. I know the magnitude has to be 2,000 newtons. Well, the magnitude of that isn't 2,000 newtons. I think the magnitude of that is the square root of 68, if I figured it out right. Well, that's not going to do. So let's do this. There's going to be this coefficient. I'm going to multiply everything in the parentheses by that c. And we'll figure out what c is here in a second. But what's going on with this ijk business? Well, <coughs> 4, 6, and 4 are scalars. Right? They're just, they have magnitude. Now, they have direction draw on this drawing here. That 4 goes horizontally. That 6 goes vertically. And that 4 right there goes out of the page, or out of the, uh, the plane of the board here. So I know they have direction because of how I drew them. Well, how do I write it over here so that the directions here have some kind of mathematical definition? Well, there's these things called unit vectors. And unit vectors are exactly what they sound like. They have a magnitude of 1, one unit, whatever the unit is. And they have a direction. So when you take a scalar like 4, and multiply it by the unit vector i, you've given it direction, but you haven't changed its magnitude. All you did was take a scalar and say, here's what direction that scalar goes in. So 
the unit vector for the x direction is i, the unit vector for the y direction is j, and the unit vector for the z direction is k. Now, why i, j, k? Who knows? There's 26 letters in the alphabet. Pick a couple. You could, we could have picked anything um, for historical reasons, I suppose. We use i, j, and k. But those are unit vectors. They give you direction, but they don't change magnitude. That's just what we need here. Now, there's no way to simplify what's in the parentheses. I guess I could divide it by 2. But there's no way to get rid of that i, j, and k. That, this, this form here, that's as simple as it gets. There's no more compact way to write this. So this can't be simplified, like I said, other than dividing by 2. So what's C? Well, let's see. How do you figure out the magnitude of a vector? Well, in 2D, you use Pythagorean theorem. Well, Pythagorean theorem works in any number of dimensions, so it'll work here in three dimensions. So let's, let's write this out. The magnitude of my, oops, let me fix that. I can do better. Ah, oh, that's better. The magnitude of that is going to be the sum of the squares of all the components. Well, the first component is going to be 4c. The square of that is going to be 16c squared. OK, 6c squared is going to be 6c, the quantity squared, is going to be 36c squared, let's get rid of that, plus another 16c squared. Well, the c squareds all come out, so this is going to be like that, and add up 16 plus 16 plus 36, you get 68. Now, the uh, magnitude here is 2,000 newtons. I know what that is. It's, that's got to be 2,000, so let's write that here. And I guess I'll leave the units on there, get rid of that. And so that means C is, I'll get my self out of your way here in a second. So let me write this down. And this is, let's see, what was that? Uh, 242.536. Two. There. There's C. So now we know what this is. Now we can write this out in its x, y, and z components. Well, can you see it down here if I do that? Let me write it down here real quick for you. OK, there you go. There's what it looks like in this i, j, k format. Those are the components of this vector in the x, y, and z directions. This is what we would normally call like rectangular coordinates. Well, in 2D vectors, you could write them out in polar coordinates if you wanted to, and you can. Um, the other way to do it in 3D coordinates is now not called polar, it's called spherical coordinates. We can do that too, and I'm going to do that here in a second, but before we do that, we've got to write down or define some angles here. Because there's in a cube like this, there's a bunch of different ways to define angles. Well, the one we've picked, for probably mathematical reasons or historical reasons, is we're going to take the angles from the vector to the axis. Now, um, this one is uh, called theta x, that angle from the vector to the axis. Now, I want to be clear, this is not parallel to the xy plane. It's actually out in space here somewhere. It's hard to draw in two dimensions. So the next one is theta y, and that goes from this vector, from this vector in 3D space to that axis. And um, the third one, unsurprisingly, is theta z, and that goes from, let me try this again. And uh, theta z goes from this vector line in three dimensions to the z-axis. Again, the fact that I've got it drawn there does not mean it's in the x-z plane or the y-z plane. It's not. It's actually going out at some angle to that vector. Okay? So it would be great if we could figure out those angles, wouldn't it? We can do that. All right, let's get rid of all this stuff.
okay, the way to, way to figure out a cosine angle is to remember that even though these, the, we're going from the, this vector to the axis and it's not in one of our x, y, y, z planes, if you look at it from the right angle, it's still a triangle. Let me try this. I'm going to draw this vector and the x-axis. Let me you know, draw it in green. That sounds good. Okay, there's the x-axis, and there's f. Now, what direction am I looking at it in? Well, let's see. I would be kind of, whoops, I'm kind of looking at it from up this direction, okay? That's okay. Remember, we're in three dimensions now, so we get, to, we get, to, we get a whole bunch of uh, dimensional options we didn't have before. But if I look at this in the right way, from the right angle, this is what it looks like. And that's f of x. Well, okay, let's see. Cosine is opposite over hypotenuse. Let me write the f there to make it a little, little more clear. Um, so f x over f is cosine theta x. Well, that's pretty familiar, isn't it? And similarly, f of y or f cosine theta y and f of z over f equals cosine theta z. Well, dang, that's so easy a professor could do it. Well, we already know what fx, fy, and fz are. There they are. They're right there. We already know. Well, hang on. That means this is, let's see, 970.143 over 2,000. It's over Newtons over Newtons, and Newtons cancel out, so I'll leave the units off there. Well, this one looks like 1455.214 over 2,000. And theta, this one is... Uh, 970. Well, dang, that's not hard. We can. This is easy now. All the the trick is to figure out how we to understand that we're looking at this in a direction that's not parallel or perpendicular to any of the faces of this little rectangular cube thing I've got going here. So if we can go from here to here, that's the big idea. Going from here to here means it's easy to figure this stuff out. And if you want to go to the last step here, let me write down the angles for you. Just figure out the uh, arc cosine of, of these. Hmm. Well, that's not too hard, is it? So let's think about what we've done here. We started out with a force that was defined according to this, the relative sizes of a, of a 3D uh, rectangle basically that defines it. We figured out what the x, y, or the, yeah, the x, y, and z components were and figured out what all the cosine angles were. So there you go. Hope this helps and I'll see you next time.